Hey, what's going on everyone? We're back with part three of turning infield double plays from the shortstop position. We're here in our new facility. Uh, we're gonna talk about balls to our backhand side. Now again, if you haven't seen part one and part two, go check those out. We talk about underhand feeds and we also talk about sidearm feeds. Now the mechanics on these plays are gonna be the same regardless whether you play baseball or if you play softball. So it doesn't matter the sport that you play. So this is probably the least frequent play that we're going to use when it comes to turning double plays, but we need to practice it because we are gonna be asked to do it at some point in a game. Now these balls are balls that we cannot get in front of, that we're going to have to feel outside our body. The first tip I wanna give you is this. If I can feel the ball in this manner, with my palm facing the sky and not a backhand ball, I wanna do it. And that's even on a ball that may take my momentum this way. So this is completely different than a normal fielded ground ball. If I'm a shortstop and I'm making the play to first base and the ball is outside my body, I don't want to try to fight to get here because I feel it like this, but my momentum is going this way and now I've got this super long throw across the field and I can't get the runner out. So what we teach in that instance is you're just going to turn your glove over, you're going to backhand it so you can get your momentum going towards your target, you're going to throw the runner out. But on a double play feed, we're not trying to get any momentum going towards our target. We don't need momentum towards our target. And so one thing is, if I'm moving to my right, right, so I'm moving towards my backhand, and let's say the ball's right here. Now I could backhand that ball, but I could also get there and feel it this way, but my momentum might be going away from my target. I would prefer the, the fielder to do that. So this is what it would look like. Ball's over here, I'm coming this way, I feel it like that, and I still make my double play turn to my partner. That's a really easy play. And the reason we talk about doing that is because if instead you were coming this way and instead of just going here, you go backhand, well, this becomes a much tougher play. And I see players do that a lot. I'll see them, and it's probably because we talk so much about backhanding balls that are to our right so we can throw the ball across. But I'll see a player slow down and backhand it and then have to turn the double play like this versus just taking one extra step, building it here, and throwing it uphill to our partner. So keep that in mind. Now, there are gonna be balls that we have to backhand, right? Our momentum is going too much this way. I can't reach it. I can't turn my glove over. I have to go backhand. And so when we do that, there's really two ways to do it. So the first way is, as I reach out to backhand this ball, so if I'm here and I field it and I backhand the ball like this, depending on how your feet are set up, you could be fielding it this way, you could be fielding it this way with your left foot in front. If your left foot is in front, let's say you're running and you field it this way, well then I can quickly pivot my feet. Right, so I'm gonna take my right foot and I'm gonna replace my left foot. So I'm here, I field it, I replace my feet and I throw the ball uphill. Now the principles apply the same way they did on the sidearm feed, is when I replace my feet, I don't wanna replace and stand up tall. I wanna replace my feet and I wanna stay as low as I possibly can. I wanna bring the ball right to my right armpit. So my thumb of my glove should come to the thumb of my fingers. So thumb to thumb, as I replace, I'm gonna stay low and I'm gonna throw the ball uphill to my partner. And we talked in the last video, I wanna throw uphill because it's much easier to turn a double play up here than it is for an infielder or second baseman to have to turn their glove over. So I stay low, short arm action. I want to stay over with my torso and have a low arm slot. I don't wanna stand up tall and have a high arm slot. That will help me throw the ball uphill. So that's if my left foot's in front. If my right foot is in front, so I come over here and I feel the ball this way, I can drop my left foot back and all the same principles apply as well. So I'm coming this way, I feel the ball here, I just drop step my left foot and I throw the ball uphill. So both of those ways are possible to turn double plays, whether it's left foot in front 
or right foot in front. Now, depending on how much momentum you have, if it's a ball that you're really outstretched for, that's where you may have to jump and throw. Now, this is probably the most rare of these plays, but you can still work on this play. And so on this play, I'm going to be running hard, so I cannot stop my momentum. I'm going to catch this ball, and I'm going to continue to be running. If I feel like I can get the runner here, and this is where we have to communicate as a second baseman, we have to know the speed of the runner at first base. If it's a slow runner at first, and we feel that we can get this runner at second base, first the second baseman needs to be helping us. So they should be watching the ball, watching the runner, and saying 2-2-2 two, 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 or 1-1-1. One, one, one. If we feel we can get the runner at second, I'm going to make a jump throw. So on my jump throw, all I'm going to do is jump off of my left foot. So I'm gonna jump off of my left. So I'm here, I'm gonna jump off of my left. I'm going to try to get my belt buckle towards my target. So I try to slow it down. I feel the ball. I jump off of my left. I try to get my belt buckle turned towards my target. That is the key, get my belt buckle turned. This play, again, we can practice this play. You don't have to spend a ton of time on this play because, well, it's not gonna be made very often. I'd much rather spend a lot of time on underhand feeds and on, on sidearm feeds uphill. We will spend time again on the backhand play, but the backhand play happens much less often in games. We still wanna be able to feel like if we do get it in a game, we've practiced it before. Right? And so I think there's always a good time in practice at some point, it doesn't have to be every day, we work on some creative plays, we work on some what we call web gems, because this is not an easy play, correct? And so giving the player the feeling in a game like they have been through every play that they might be called to do in a game. So hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give a thumbs up, all that good stuff and we'll talk to you later. What do you need to be a great infielder? Okay, let's talk about the mental game because this is such an important part of fielding. And a lot of people don't talk about this. If a hitter hits a ball 90 plus miles an hour, the ball's gonna travel about 90 feet in a half a second. When I catch when my left foot lands, I get to the right, I brace, I go. So I'm gonna bring the ball here as my right foot starts to go to my left. take the ball out of my glove, my fingers should be on top of the ball. I don't take it out like this. I don't take it out like this. I'm on top of the ball right here. But it's not just about fielding the ball again, it's about fielding the ball properly every single time. If you're just gonna wait for your team to practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you're just gonna wait to field at practice when your coach actually does fielding practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you think you're gonna get great fielding three to five balls in infield outfield, you're crazy. You've gotta field a lot. And so you've gotta field before practice, you've gotta field after practice, you've gotta be able to do it on your own. Don't just wait for somebody to say, let's go practice infield. Go grab somebody and say, let's practice infield.